love to have those conversations with y'all. You want to see how it applies to y'all's, your, your business. But really that second piece is cash flow control. Um, much like Felicia, Amazon, uh, in our life right now with all of, all of the ease of use and um, it's, it's just, hey, do you need this again this month? And here you don't have to go to the grocery store and buy toilet paper, we'll deliver it to your door. So cash flow control, it's so easy to turn on outflows. So outflows would be that Netflix subscription, the Comcast subscription, uh, Amazon, all that stuff that maybe you don't evaluate as often as you should. Um, so part of the control is the money going out. And any business, any household is going to have outflows. So what we kind of look at with control is inflows and the outflows. So outflows are easy. Um, you can kind of control how often or some of the automatic payments really evaluate if those need to be on automatic payment and how you use maybe a debit card or an ACH. So one side of me is telling you to turn on ACHs for your customer and then as a business owner, maybe you evaluate which you have on ACH. And right. so um, just be aware of what you've got and like the Spotify is, is a great example, you know, the $9.99 a month or whatever that costs per year, evaluate that and XM, all those good ways that money just kind of falls through the pockets, so to speak. Exactly. So that's the outflow. And so we kind of help do that when we're assessing, you know, some of the monthly outflows for our clients and just looking at what industry standards are and, and saying, hey, you, you're probably paying way too much for energy right now, utilities, have you evaluated that in the last three years, one, one year? Um, and so it's just that, it's that reminder. If you don't already have it set up and you're, we can kind of help be that drip. Um, so cash flow control on the outflow. On the inflow, um, and actually Penny referenced it probably a few years back, um, there's, there's books out there like Profit First and um, other, other cash flow control mechanisms that we really like. And um, you can implement somewhat of a Profit First mentality in any, in any business. Um, we are by no means saying to implement it in your business today or anything, but you know, honestly, we've implemented it in our business. And so what that is for our business, as far as cash flow control is, the money comes in and we tell it where to go from day one. So we actually have a deposit account. And then from that deposit account, we make two transfers a month. And so that deposit account builds up. And then twice a month, we take a percentage of that deposit account, transfer it to operating account transfer it to a profit account, and then transfer it to a tax account. And so what that does is we're telling that money where to go versus all those outflows that we mentioned telling us where to go, telling that money where to go. So um, by doing that, not even, we don't do it twice a month. We actually do it more frequently. We do it bi-weekly just because that's where our payroll cycle is. So um, yeah, so money needs to go into those operating account before the payroll account or these guys wouldn't show up on Friday. So, uh, but but that, that's kind of, that's something we've implemented. We've probably done that here for two or three years. Um, so since we were introduced to that some kind of method and um, Profit First is really starting to make a push and you see guys in our industry that kind of knock it down and say it, it won't work, it's too simple, but it works. I mean, honestly, from, from our aspect, I mean, in our business and even what clients we've implemented that with, um, it's not right for everybody. You kind of have to mature enough to a point where you have to address some of the outflows and then get to where you build up those percentages. But it gives me personally comfort that I know I've got money set aside for taxes and I've got money set aside for profit distribution and, and things to that nature. You have to uh, start with anything. You have to just start slow. And so you don't want to transfer over. Like if your profit margin on most jobs is 30%, you can't start transferring 30% profit day one. Start with 1% because you have to control some of the operating costs that are coming out of the business right. uh, to achieve that. And so that's something that we've done. Um, other things that work are, um, you know, if you're a fan of Dave Ramsey, Dave Ramsey's envelope system is very similar to Profit First. It's just you're working within separate bank accounts. And uh, I'm not sure if, if you've seen a system like Profit First in your bank. Um, all it is is setting up four bank accounts. And so while people might knock you down and say, you're gonna charge me more because you're gonna reconcile three more bank accounts than you're used to, it's the same amount of activity. All we're adding in is two additional transfers per month. So it's not a lot of work from our aspect. And the technology nowadays with bank fees, it's all coming in anyway. So. Um, but we do like the separate bank accounts because 
a really good banker, they're gonna they're gonna bundle your accounts together, and you're they're gonna have your total balance, and that's what's gonna determine your fee that you pay the bank. So, the other thing, the other reason why bankers love this is you're keeping more money in their bank with the profit account, with the tax account, and so um, what it does for some business owners, me, um, me as well, that profit account when it builds up. Once a quarter, you actually take half of that and take it to the house. And so it allows you to take a dividend out of the business versus in years past, personally speaking, you know, I know that expenses are coming up. I shouldn't take that money. I shouldn't, I should leave it there. And then what we see in business owners, they never take money out of their business. They never get the pride of ownership by taking a dividend. Mm -hmm. Ford, Chevron, Exxon, all those guys, they pay dividends to their owners. And so your business shouldn't be any different. So, um, Real, real big advocate of profit first. Uh, we did some, we did some work with those guys and really believe in their system. Um, so that's something you can definitely look at to just look at control. And um, if you've ever done the Dave Ramsey in a personal situation, it's just like that for a business. And if you have, if you know, so many people nowadays have it, issues with overspending and things like that. Let's take it back old school. Let's just go cash. And so once that cash runs out you can't make that purchase. And so that probably protects you. And um, while that goes counterintuitive to a line of credit or a credit card, but overall we're looking at the health of the business, the health of the family. And so um, some of the overspending, some of just that purchases that aren't necessary um, really need to be addressed for cash flow considerations. So do y'all have any questions on cash flow control? What we've seen, like, I know, I know Profit First was on your agenda four years ago, or five years ago, yeah, but. I've been doing it for four years. And okay. I think that the thing about Profit First that really has been awesome is one, um, having that set amount that gets transferred out, I know what I've got, and I call it the vault. I know what I've got in the vault that um, I can then uh, allocate for new purchases, new equipment, um, start you know getting ready for that new employee that might be coming make sure I'm fully funded with that before I hire them and I can I can see that uh, for me personally I just love being able to take that portion out at the quarter and for really the first time in 25 years get that benefit of being a business owner mm -hmm. I've always felt guilty about that and never really had like well how much is enough how much is too much but it's like there's rules mm -hmm. sort of yeah it's percentages and percentages yeah. Yeah. which you know is great for me um and so that's like oh wow this business stuff is pretty good and um and i'm getting a benefit from it you know matt and i are getting yeah. a benefit from that so that's been awesome as well as um, it sets that uh, amount aside so that I can then bonus my people who are hardworking and you know d doing all that stuff. It's just been, mm -hmm. it's been awesome. It yeah. really just uh, has uh, given me a real peace, mm -hmm. and it also helps me to really see how we're doing. Not only on the what's going out, what right. we're spending, and making sure that we don't get above that percentage that's been allocated to the operating expense. It's, it's been great. Awesome. Yeah, I have no. to say, I, I didn't do the additional accounts. I just allocate them in, um, in my QuickBooks. Yeah. Um, but that's not a problem for me. I don't go and borrow from those accounts. Sure. Um, but if, if that is a, an issue for others, making it hard to get to that money is a good idea. Yeah, and, and what, we, what we see there is <laughs> you can easily, you, you're great because your QuickBooks is up to date. And so, but most of our clients, you know, they're running in arrears. And so they don't know, like their accounting isn't as up to date maybe as yours is, or, or even ours. And so they're running their they're running their business off of their bank account. And so what we see is, hey, I'm, I, it's easy for me to go to the bank website or the bank app and see how much money I have in this account. So, and really, while as nerdy accountants, we would love to say your accounting needs to be updated daily, and we know that not everyone runs an accounting firm. And so it's one of those where if you can just isolate the money and get it in the right buckets, whenever you go to look and see what's in those buckets, it's pretty easy to see really quick. And so if you do nothing else, just making the transfers. And so the great thing about that is if there's less money in the operating account, it helps you maybe make some harder decisions on the money that's coming out of those operating accounts. Um, and that, that's personally speaking, that's what it was for us. Um, the other piece that was important for us was 
was loss aversion. And so everyone builds up in your business, in your bank account, a watermark. So whatever that watermark is, 50,000, 100,000, and it builds up to that. Well, whenever it drops below that watermark that it's hit, it's painful, and no matter what it is. And so if I've got to make payroll, I'm gonna be disgruntled about making payroll because my cash is gone. If I'm gonna make a tax check, if I'm gonna write a tax check to the IRS, it's gonna hurt that much more than if that money's already been set aside, a thousand, two thousand dollars a time. And so that's what that money's for. It's for the IRS, it's for profit distributions, it's for running the business. And so it's just, it's got a purpose. And so that's where the control piece is really meant to give you peace. And that's what it's done for us, that's what it's done for other clients that we put on that. And so it's amazing just the mindset shift that occurs yeah. when that happens. It truly so. was transformative for, um, for my bookkeeping and, yeah. and it just, yeah, it was great. No, that's great. Uh, I can awesome. see where that could be really beneficial because it's more proactive than being reactive. Exactly, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and you're just, so you're literally telling your cash where to go. And so you're in the driver's seat, and that's why we tell you to start off slow, like 1%, and then grow to 2%. And you have a goal. Maybe that goal you know, is the 15 30% based on your industry. Um, but you're starting off slow. And, and you know, even some of our clients that they're in their first year of Profit First, you know, they have $1,000 in their profit account, and then at the end of the quarter, they take 500 of that. That's probably the first distribution or dividend they've taken out of their business in years. Right. And so they celebrate it. They go to dinner, they go buy what they, you know, the toy that they've been wanting to buy. And so yeah. the feedback That's that fine. we've gotten from it is really good. Um, and it's just, it's keeping it simple. You know, it, it's so, like, we, we're not trying to make things complicated. The tax law is complicated enough. Like, you know, it's, it's, <laughs> let's, let's just boil some stuff down to where you can easily explain that to your neighbor next door who doesn't know. So, right. but that's, so that's cash flow control. Um, incentives to pay, this is something that, you know, it's an old school kind of concept. Uh, 